reject it, it can automatically approve it, it can send it to another approver, or I think there's one more step and we'll look at that in, in just a few minutes. Then you want to go through and configure how the alert messages are to be sent out. So if you have an approver, how do you want that approver to know that he has a job to do on that uh, workflow? And then, of course, you have to activate the workflow. And you can turn the workflows off and on if you want to. So if you have three or four different ones set up, you could have a vacation one set up and a, a normal one set up and a special one set up. And you could just activate one, deactivate the other, and just let them, let them flow through the system. <coughs> So let's go ahead and look at what, and see what this looks like. Uh, again, here's a list of uh, workflows, and we're going to go ahead and set one up. So I'll let you guys pick which one we want to do. Anybody have a favorite there on the list? Purchase orders. Okay. Now I might want to explain something here. So when you see me jumping around a little bit, uh, you'll know what's happening. I've got, uh, on this uh, laptop, it's actually a server laptop, and I've got two different users logged into the server at the same time. We've got, I'm logged in as user one, and then I've got another user logged in as user two. So I'll be switching between these two users so you can kind of make, see that it goes to multiple people. It's kind of hard to simulate five people in the room at the same time, so you'll have to kind of use your imagination a little bit. So when I switch to another user, that's what I'm doing with, with that. Okay, so if we go into <clears throat> SharePoint, this is what SharePoint on a, just a vanilla install looks like, and it creates a site there, and we call it, for lack of a better name, GP Workflow. And this gets created when you install the module, and you have to define where it's going to live, and, and it has to define also some users that can perform tasks within the system. <clears throat> so, um, one of the first areas that you'll be going into is the administration area, and we'll select a workflow type to use, and this is where you actually define the manager or managers for the different workflows. So in order for the workflow to be in use, you'll have to say that it's going to be in use, and this is at the select workflow types to use, and these are the document types, and then this is the managers uh, or manager that would be associated with this individual workflow. Now to make things easy for Dick, they didn't want anything to go wrong, you know how everything goes wrong when you do a presentation. I just made these two users the manager for everything, so we should be able to work without any problems here. So for a smaller company, you may have the manager being the same person as the administrator. <coughs> now when you put a user in this position as the manager, what SharePoint does, it actually puts these users in internal SharePoint groups. So these groups are how the security works. So you don't have to do a direct security, it takes care of it in the background based on where you place the individuals. And this is true for this screen and for the workflows as well. So we're going to go back to administration, and we've got a purchase order approval workflow um, available. So what we're going to do is we're going to deactivate this workflow and create a new one so we don't have two of them. And I think you can have two workflows on the same area if you wanted to. But we're just going to de deactivate this one so you kind of see what we do from scratch. Okay, we're going to do a new workflow, <clears throat> and we're going and it gives us our types we want to to work with here. So we're going to do a purchase order, and the first thing we want to do is give it a name, and we'll just call it the Lunch and Learn. PO workflow. So, 
Again, this is the activation part for this particular workflow, so we'll tell it that it's activated. <coughs> And then here is where you can select the originators. So right now it's saying that any user who creates a purchase order, we want to activate this workflow. But you can specify it to a user or group. Now these users or groups are Active Directory users. They're not Great Plains users. So it keeps track of it by the user that's logged on to the PC. Which means that you can turn around and give it back to the Active Directory. Exactly. Yeah. So that route. Yeah, that would be really the best way to administer that. So for right now, we'll just say that the any user. Uh, so anytime we do a purchase order in Great Plains, it's going to activate this workflow. Now, if you want to add some individuals to have read-only access, you'd add them here. And you can add one or more users or groups, and they'd be able to see the documents, see the workflow, see what's going on, but they can't act on them. So the next thing we would do <coughs> is add a workflow step or steps. And we'll just call this about the same thing here. And in the way this is set up, you can create quite a, a number of steps and quite an, a, an, an amount of detail when this step should kick in. So right now, we're going to say this is the first step. But if you have multiple steps, it's going you can insert in between two other steps you already have or create a Y, create a, a W. You can create all kinds of different workflows here. And we'll look at some examples of those. So it can be an approval or an action. So if it's an action, you'd put in the name here of what you'd want the user to do first. And when they've completed the action, then it would go to the next step. But to make this simple for right now, we're just going to make this an approval step. <clears throat> now this is where you get a little creative with the step itself. So right now, it's set to always fire. But you can zero in on, on different types of uh, criteria in order for the step to fire. So you've got uh, a number of different columns here for filtering. So you've got a where and a where not. And it's got fields that are related to the, the document or the master record you're working with. So you can use any number of fields to limit this step or to filter this step. And you can stack these steps as, as many as you need to make this workflow work the way you want to. So you could say where the vendor is, is equal to and put the vendor here. So you could really specify it down to a particular vendor if you wanted it to. So once you've selected your item, then you've got this logic available to further define and filter the step. And then after you, you set that up, you also can move to the next step if the conditions aren't met to require approval for this step. So that means if it doesn't fit, it'll skip that step and just move on to the next one. So you can create you know, four or five, six different steps that will just skip if it doesn't require. So if you have six vendors, then you could set all six of those up. But for the purpose of this demonstration, we're just going to say it's going to be always require approval. So the next step here is you can identify the approvers. And so we'll, and this is again looking at the Active Directory. So we're going to uh, say that we want GP workflow user to be the approver on this. Now, if you have more than one, an approval approver pool, you can select one of these other options. So you could have the majority must approve or all must approve. So again, you design the workflow how it fits your company. And this is where you set the, the time limit. Right, so, right, right there, 
on the Active Directory, if you choose the GC workflow and you have three people in that workflow, in, in that Active Directory, any one of those three where you have a set up only one response to you find that way. I believe that's correct. I haven't tested that scenario and I'd have to make sure and just test it once to give 100% on that, but that's the way I understand it and there was nothing specific in the manual for that part of it. Well, sometimes, you know, great plans we have to kind of venture out and figure out if it's going to work or not. I'm sure you haven't had that at your installation, but, you know, every once in a while we run into that. <laughs> in that no, in ever. In that scenario, the GP workflow would actually be a group. That's right. This is a user here. This is just a... Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, but if we had a group, that would, that would be... And that would all... And, and again, the, the active directory is, is signed within SharePoint to have access to or you can straight to active directory? Straight to active directory. So part of the, the installation... Uh, and, and if you want to go further, we can ask Andy on this, is creating that link between SharePoint and Active Directory. So you determine uh, how long this uh, approver has to work on it before we go into escalation. And then at this point, we have, okay, send copies to who when you want, when things happen. Okay, so Right now, this is the person that's going to approve. So when it gets approved, we want ourselves to know that it got approved. This is going to be the user that does it. So we're going to want an approved copy. And we'll, we'll just put we'll put all of these in here just so that we'll have. Uh, kind of everything going and we get a lot of email, a lot of action here. Okay, so you can see the different steps that can happen to this document that starts to the system. So it either can be approved, it can be this is the first step when you actually assign it to be approved. Uh, if the approver requests a change, if the approver rejects it, if the approver delegates it, or if it gets escalated due to inaction by the specified time period. These are all conditions that you can configure alerts to happen. So we'll go ahead and save that step. And again, you can have as many steps as you feel comfortable with on that workflow. <coughs> So now we've put our step in, we go down to the next part of it, and we want to always require at least one approver. One approver. If you don't check that box, it won't go through the system because it doesn't require anything to happen. So you need to have that set up. And then this is the area that if the approver who's set up, <coughs> excuse me, uh, submits his own document, who should it go to instead of himself? So you don't have the, <coughs> you have a little bit of uh, accountability here. So in this case, we'll leave that blank for right now. And if you want to allow delegation to happen on this workflow, we put that in. And then here's the escalation area of the workflow. So when a step is overdue, what do you want the system to do? So we can take no action, <clears throat> we can del automatically delegate it to the next approver. So if you have four approvers in the pool or in the steps, they'll just move to the next one. <clears throat> or you can have it delegate to an escalation approver. So if somebody's not doing their job, you have one person all oversee it and <clears throat> make sure that something happens on it. Or you can have the system automatically either approve or reject this workflow. So, and then the next section is how we're going to be, do notifications. So we can send a Microsoft Dynamics uh, desktop alert, and we can also uh, configure how the emails are to be sent. So you can don't send emails. You can send an immediate email. That's how we're going to set it 